I have a question for you. Do you really think that your data is safe on a little SD card? How about one of the hard drives that you use to edit off of? The truth is your data is not safe, especially when you have a single point of failure. So in this video, I'm gonna go through my entire process from the moment I hit record on my camera all the way through final delivery for a client or when I upload here. And this is the workflow that I've developed over years of shooting content and having things happen like cards fail and hard drives fail and computers crash. All right, let's get into it. Now I'm just gonna pause the video for one second and tell you about the Creator Film School. Now I have a platform off of YouTube which is called the Creator Film School which has all of my trainings on how to be a creator. I teach you how to use your cameras, how to tell stories, and how to make this a career, especially if you wanna be here on YouTube. Now I have a ton of exclusive courses that you'll only find over on the Creator Film School, but I also include a lot of my content from here on my channel, and it's completely ad-free. So I take out all the sponsors or anything else that detracts from the learning experience, and also it just provides an environment to make it super easy to learn the content, because you're not constantly distracted by sidebars and suggested content and everything else that comes with YouTube. And my goal with the Creator Film School is to make it super super affordable so that anybody can access the content and learn how to be a creator. And I'll include a link down below in the description to where you can try the Creator Film School for free. One of the worst things that could happen when you go to edit your video is you plug in your hard drive and all of a sudden it doesn't show up. You start plugging it into different ports, you try different computers, but nothing works. And then you realize that your hard drive has failed and everything that is on that hard drive is gone. Now there's ways that you can recover hard drives, but it sometimes is super expensive and sometimes you don't get all of your data back. So instead of just thinking that, you know, this will never happen to you, you need to start protecting yourself so that you don't lose your data. And over my years of being a creator and a filmmaker, I've had different points of failure happen throughout the entire chain of my workflow. I've had cameras go down on the middle of set or I've had SD cards or red mags that have just failed in the middle of a take, and then I've had data not transfer properly, or hard drives fail, or computers fail. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong throughout my years of working in this industry. I've talked to some people who've said, oh yeah, I've never had a hard drive fail, but that doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen tomorrow. And all of this technology, no matter how good it is, is still not perfect. So to avoid having data loss and losing your project or your footage or anything that you might need in the future, there's a few safeguards that you could take that's gonna really help you out. And if something does fail, well, you're gonna be redundant, which basically means that if something fails, you'll have a backup somewhere that you can pull from and be able to still have all of that data. Now, early on when I was in film school, I learned about Murphy's Law. And that's basically anything that can go wrong will go wrong at the worst possible time. And this is something that has stuck with me through my entire journey as a creator because there are just so many things that go wrong when you're making videos that you just kind of have to anticipate that things will go wrong at the worst possible time. And so with that mindset, you could set yourself up to have the least vulnerability at each point that you have your data so that you can make sure that you have your footage when you need it to go edit your project or you're ready to deliver to a client or you're ready to upload somewhere. So let's start at the beginning at the filming process. Now, depending on which camera you're working on, you'll have redundant recording. So I shoot on Sony cameras. I have the a7S Mark III. That is my main camera that I shoot for my YouTube content. And I have the Sony FX6, which is what I use for all my client work. Now, these cameras allow me to record to two cards simultaneously. And so when I'm filming, no matter what project I'm working on, I do a redundant recording. So it's recording to two cards internally. Now, you might think like your SD card won't fail, but I have had an SD card fail in the past. So I always do the redundant recording if possible. So depending on the camera that you're working with, you could have this redundant recording internal, or you could use something like an Atomos monitor, which has some backup recording. I personally want two different recordings when I'm out filming. Now, there's plenty of cameras that don't offer this redundant, and there's situations where it doesn't make sense. If I'm flying my drone, or if I'm using something like a 360 camera or an action camera, you're only gonna be able to put one card in those cameras. For that reason, I don't put huge cards and then put 10 days of recording onto one card. Every day that I'm recording, I pull my data off and try to put it onto hard drives. Now there's situations that I've been in where that doesn't necessarily work. And in those situations, I'll typically record only about a day's worth of content, maybe less. And that way I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket and putting everything from a huge shoot 
onto one card. And this for me is super important when I'm out filming like an adventure film and I'm trying to do all this crazy stuff and all these cool things have happened. But if I have one card with all my data on it and I wait till I get home to transfer everything, well, if that card fails or something happens in transit, I could lose everything. And for me, I try to download all my footage onto hard drives at the end of a day, just so that I only have about one day of footage that's on cards. Now, when I transfer my data, I always have at least two different hard drives that I bring it to. So I have a four terabyte hard drive in my MacBook Pro, and then I typically bring these SSDs with me when I'm traveling or doing an adventure. I'll make sure I have enough space on my computer so that I have one copy on my computer and one copy on an external drive. Now, if I'm using a computer that doesn't have as much internal storage, I just bring two of these drives. I use these SanDisk Extreme Portables because they're rugged and I've never had any issues with them. Now, to transfer my data from the card to the hard drives or my computer, I use a piece of software called Hedge. Now Hedge has a super intuitive interface and on the left-hand side, you have your sources and on the right-hand side, you have the destinations. And when you set this up, it will transfer your cards, but also verify that the data has been transferred properly. And this is important. If you're using say a Mac and you just use the finder to transfer your files, well, if you leave your computer and you don't sit there and watch the transfer var go through from zero to 100%, well, if it fails, you don't know if it failed. You could check your data and see how much data is between the cards. But if you're in a rush or you're doing something else and you forget to check the data on both the card and what was transferred, you might then pull the card into your camera, format it, and then you lost something. So making sure that you'd verify all the data that goes onto your hard drives is super important. And so the software that I use, Hedge, does the transfer and then also does a verification and gives you a warning if something wasn't transferred properly. The other cool thing is you can hook it to your phone so that if you leave your computer, let some transfers run, how much has been transferred and if there's any issues during the transfers. So if, for example, when I'm on the road and I'm traveling and I might go eat dinner while my cards are transferring in my room and I can know on my phone that, oh, it transferred or there was a failure and then so I could go back and check it. For me, it's always important to know where my data is at all times. Now, when I'm ready to start editing, I typically have three copies of my data. When I come back to my office here, I'll make a third copy on one of these spinny drives. This is an 18 terabyte internal drive. I use it as an external drive because I have an OWC enclosure which has eight bays and I can hot swap these in and out of that drive. So I use these as my final storage and I'll have multiple of these per project. But this is basically the drive I use for archiving. But what I do is before I start my edit, I make sure I have my two copies that are on my SSDs, one that I'm gonna edit off of, one that's just a backup, and then a third copy that's in my archive, just so that if there's any issue, I have three copies to always pull from. Now from there, I'll edit my project and I'll make sure that my backups for my Final Cut file are separate than the hard drive that I'm editing off of. Just so if there is a point of failure, I always have a backup of the work that I've been working on. Now until I deliver my project or I upload my video, I have three points of all this footage. But when the project is done, I don't need to keep three copies of the data. I typically only keep two. I keep my master and then my backup and I use all of these drives to back up everything. So I have, so I keep two drives that are duplicates of each other. I have one that's the primary and then I back up all of that data onto a second one and that's basically just my archive. And the reason for that is I wanna make sure that if one of these drives fails, I always have that second drive that I can pull from so I don't lose anything. And I do go back onto projects all the time so it's important that I stay redundant even after a project is finished. It is gonna cost more money to have all of these extra drives but it is worth it because there's been times where I've needed to dig into old projects and I've pulled up a drive, it's failed, and I've had to use the backup drive. So for me, I've found it is important to always have two copies of everything as long as you wanna keep it. But if you're not worried about losing your data, well, you could keep it on a single drive, but that drive will fail eventually. No drive is perfect and no drive is gonna last forever. Now to do my archiving, I use a program called Carbon Copy Cloner. And so what that does is it allows me to duplicate one drive to a backup drive and make it identical. So anything I do to this first drive, when I run it through Carbon Copy Cloner, it's going to then copy the data to this drive. So if I change some files around or I put a new edit file or I add some extra things onto this master drive, turn on Carbon Copy Cloner, it just finds what's different on this backup drive and then updates it. And so it's a super important part of my process because that way I always have two identical drives that are my archive. So the idea with my workflow is essentially having redundancy at any point that I can so that if something was to fail, 
I always have a backup. Now, the only thing that's different from this workflow that I do for my YouTube channel is that I have all of my data accessible in a RAID. So here in my office, I built an eight bay 98 terabyte hard drive, and that has everything that I've ever done on my YouTube channel. That way I could go back and access stuff quickly without having to pull up backup drives. Now for that drive, I have the same redundant structure where I have it all backed up, but I don't have two 98 terabyte drives. Instead, what I've done is I have these drives as my redundant backup, and I just basically have one drive per year. And it works the same way as if I was to use two of these drives and just making a redundant backup. So that's the only difference, and that's just because personally, when I'm making videos for my YouTube channel, I always need access to old data, and I feel like I'm always going into my archive, so I just wanna make sure that I have all of that accessible and plugged into my computer at all times. Otherwise, the process is the same. I try to have two recordings when I'm filming my footage, and then I transfer that every day if possible onto two different hard drives. When I come back to my office, I make three copies just for the entire edit process. Once that edit's done, I put it on two backup drives, and that way I always have redundancy in my system, and if anything fails at any point, I always have a backup that I can pull from. Now next, make sure you check out this video right here, which is going to go through all of the different strategies I use to be a full-time creator. See you over there.